I think I speak for everyone when I say this, that the, if you'd have told anyone before Season 4 dropped that Hawk and Robbie would be duking it out in the final, um, you know, there was always that slight possibility there, but no one really believed that it would happen just because of the way the story had been progressing uh, in terms of the previous seasons. Um, I do remember that I did videos talking about it. I said... Um, in one of my videos, you know, what if Hawk won the All Valley as a big middle finger to Crease for favoring Robbie over him? And in the house fight, you can even go back to that when Hawk says to Dimitri, do you want to help me win this thing? The seeds were very much there for Robbie and Hawk to duke it out. And I think there was teases of it in the season three, like towards the season three finale, a lot of teases. And I think as season four progressed, it became abundantly clear the Miguel had a whole separate thing going on, and Eli had the hero's journey kind of arc, so it makes sense that he ended up in the final. And he was given the second F-bomb of the season when, excuse my French, when he says, I'm the guy who's going to win this whole fucking thing. I had lit chills running through my body. I was like, ooh, finna win it now. And I tell you what, it's it's... It's almost a thing where you don't give him that line and not have him win. You know, it's almost you do a disservice to it if you don't have him win. Now, I know everyone kind of expected me to be upset that Robbie lost. And you have to look at it from this point of view. I wanted Robbie to win because I felt like it would serve the story. But I feel like the way season four played out, I'm kind of glad Robbie didn't win. Because the, the detail... That both and the journey that both Eli and Robbie went on, as much as I've talked about how Robbie and Miguel are one conversation away from being stepbrothers, um, which is going to be kind of weird, um, Eli and Robbie are so in that there's so much in common with them, they're so similar that they're, they're almost polar opposites. You have two people who are both hot headed, both aggressive fighters, both have really tragic pasts, and they use karate to try and combat that past. Now you start with Robbie embracing the Miyagi-Do legacy and becoming a better person. Hawk embraces the Cobra Kai legacy to become a better person but in the different way. And then it's come full circle with Robbie and Hawk switching dojos. Essentially that's that's your, your key fighter of each dojo right there. And I did say that Hawk joining Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang at the end of season three, they needed him. They really need him, and you see why as the season plays out, because as much as Miguel is the main man, until he fully recovers from his injury, you know, that, that crippling injury in season two, the, the fact that he's walking again is a miracle, and there's no doubt in my mind that given time, Miguel will be up there with the best, as he always was. I think the best version of Miguel is in the season three uh, coma dream. That is prime Miguel right there, and he will get to that level. But focusing on Eli and Robbie... Before I even talk about the fight and the performance by Jacob and Tanner and the build-up to this, can we please take a moment to acknowledge the fact that after it, before it hits sudden death and the crowd are cheering, they're screaming, they're all on the edge of their seat, chanting, as it's almost a meta kind of thing, because that's exactly what we were all feeling when we were all watching it. We're like, oh my god, they're actually doing this? And... There's a moment when Eli bows to Robbie, despite everything that Robbie's done to him. And I think that comes from an understanding. Because if you go back a season, Eli has done arguably worse. As much as trimming Hawk's hair off is bad. You know, Robbie broke it. Uh, Robbie. Eli broke his best friend's arm. Um, you know, and, and all this ungodly stuff. And then Robbie as well. Robbie nearly killing Miguel. There's a lot of relatability there for them too. And I think... Hawk deciding to switch sides at the end of season three wasn't just about finding his place. It was about atoning for the bad things that he's done. And I think that bow was also very symbolic of him understanding what Robbie's doing right now because he was in that same position himself. And that's a testament to how much Hawk, Eli, not Hawk, has taken the Miyagi-Do teachings to heart to be the bigger person and bow and show respect. And in that moment, Eli's the one who furthers Robbie's redemption more because it's that bow that Robbie's like like you can almost see it in, in Tanner's uh, face expression that, that he's brought back to that moment in season one where despite what Haw Hawk and Miguel were doing to Robbie in the tournament he still showed respect he bowed at the end you know he even offered Miguel a hand up it, it's almost bringing him back to that and then you've got to remember that just before this fight 
Robbie had to knock down his student, you know, and they did say there was rocky parallels all across the finale um, in the Ore Valley. I mean, Rocky Five, anyone, you know, Robbie taking on his apprentice. And let's be honest, Kenny did, didn't stand a chance. The minute Kreese got in Robbie's head, Kenny was going to get, you know, three and nil. Like it was, <laughs> it was just inevitable. But the way it played out, I'm happy that Robbie didn't win because it just, it further drove home that why he got into this mess in the first place. Miguel and Hawk got into it because they needed it to defend themselves. Robbie didn't really need it for that. He just wanted to get back at his dad. And that's what his whole journey has been about. It's about him coming home. And there's a moment in the Ore Valley where the camera pans on him. As, as Tori and the other Cobras are celebrating, the camera focuses on Robbie as Johnny and Robbie both share an exchange. And there's a perspective shift. In season one, Johnny was the one who won and he looked at Robbie walking away. This time, Robbie's the one technically who won with Cobra Kai, and he now sees it through Johnny's perspective. And that's what I said in all my previous videos, that this is about perspective. And then Eli this season. One thing that kind of disappointed me is that we didn't get a lot more to Eli this season. I think there's a lot in terms of him embracing the Miyagi-Do legacy and becoming a better version of himself to the point where even Daniel says, and you were in Cobra Kai longer than him. And these two are the definition of hybrid fighters. You've got Robbie who is in Miyagi-Do for the longest time with a dash of Cobra Kai. And then you've got Eli who is in Cobra Kai for the longest time with a dash of Miyagi-Do. Like it's, these two are literally e equal. And the reason I think it was so hard for everyone to accept that, you know, or not accept, that think that Robbie and Eli could be the final is because, let's be honest, in terms of plot, it's not been on Hawk's side. In terms of the top two fighters, it's Robbie and Miguel, like, or Miguel and Robbie. Like, to, you know, it's always interchanging between those two. And the plot's always held Hawk back, especially in season two, getting tossed around like a rag doll every five seconds. But one thing I did say in all my videos last year with season three is that you don't give that kind of progression to Eli and Robbie and not do anything with it. And I think the minute Eli walks into the dojo in season three and sees Robbie there and says, what the hell are you doing here? I can't be the only one that thought, man, I want a resolution to that. There was a video I did saying the rematch I want most is because between these two, it genuinely is personal. The these two really don't like each other. Now, obviously now, going forward, that may change. As Jacob Bertrand send, uh, send, said, unexpected team-ups. Now, obviously, Robbie and Miguel, that's something that I think is 100% going to happen. Uh, Sam and Tori, 100% going to happen. But I would go even deeper than that. I'd say Robbie and Eli. I think there's a lot of growth there for these two to really understand each other. And there's a lot of progression that goes on um, in this fight, more than just the fight itself. And that's what's great about Cobra Kai, is it's not just two characters duking out and, you know, getting all bloody and fighting each other. We care about these two characters and to see them duking out, it's conflicting. It's like, who do you want to win? Like, we're torn. But with the way the season plays out, I think I, I speak for everyone. I say when Eli wins like there's a moment of shock where it's like oh my god like, i was in disbelief i was like they've actually done it they've actually done it now this brings into question could eli still have beaten miguel yeah i think so i think it, it doesn't matter if you know if miguel's back spasm hit or not i still think eli was in a better place mentally and physically to take miguel out anyway I think as much as even as they were, I think Eli would have made the final regardless. This is why I said Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang last season absolutely needed him. Because as much as Sam's cool, like with the gender division thing that they brought in, which was more or less inevitable, we, you know, I knew that they were going to need some kind of bad arsery in there that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like Robbie on his day. And Eli was that dude. And this fight is absolutely freaking incredible. Like, I mean... I know some people might get a bit, you know, sensitive about, you know, the minute they rip their shirts off and whatever, but, you know, that harkens back to all the old school fights of the 80s, the 70s, the early 90s, like the really old school fights, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all that stuff. And they even reference it earlier on in the season when Kyle's like, Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, as they're watching it at the drive-in. Like they even reference it there. They call it on early. And I think a Robbie Eli final is more interesting to me than a Robbie Miguel final just because we've seen Robbie and Miguel we've seen that fight and more or less Robbie and Miguel are like Daniel and Johnny they're going to be yin and yang they're always going to be one 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 two 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 like they're always going to be even Stevens 
but Eli needed this win because he hasn't won barely any fights since he's been in the show, yet he's the most badass and ruthless fighter, I feel, out of the bunch. And I feel like, and I did do a video on this, talking about this as well, is Eli, for me, or Hawk, is the most dangerous fighter out of the kids. Like, by and large, when Hawk smacks into his temper, you're going down. You know, it, it, I mean, to be fair, like it depends who he's fighting. If you're fighting a Focus Robbie or a Focus Miguel, they'll take him. But majority of the other fighters would go down in seconds because Hawk is ruthless. He's fast. He's aggressive. And I love throughout this fight, they're switching between styles. It's not like when Daniel says, OK, use Cobra Kai. Eli's using both. Robbie's using both. And it's it's complemented when they start pulling each other's shirts. Like it's, it's gotten to the point where they can't even counter each other. It's almost like Anakin and Obi-Wan from Revenge of the Sith. They're so evenly matched that they have to do all this trickery and fancy flashy stuff to outmaneuver or outwork the other opponent because they're so good. And you can tell the respect is formed between Robbie and Eli, especially Robbie to Eli, when he goes to Silver and Silver says, this fight should be over by now. And Robbie says, do you want to fight him? Because it's not just like, you know, he's saying, Come, like, Terry, shut up. He's not just saying that. He's also saying, Man, I respect this dude. This After everything I've done to him, look what he's doing to me. He's making me work. And there's a level to this fight that I absolutely freaking adore. Maybe it's just, maybe it's the music, maybe it's the ambience, maybe it's the score. But I think what makes this fight so fascinating is the, just the journeys that both of these two characters have gone on since season one. And I think that fight in season one, while it was cool between Hawk and Robbie... It just, it didn't fully satisfy me because I knew Dutch was, like, Hawk was going to get the Dutch role. He was going to be the aggressor and get the disqualified. I wanted to see an all-out fight between these two tournament style. And I'm so happy that they went through with it. You know, I really am so happy. Now, it does feel like some of the fights did happen a bit forcefully, if that makes sense. But, you know, that's just part of the process. You're in season four. It's going to happen. You know, not every season can be season three. Um, and I think they really knocked it out of the park with this fight. And I think there's just so many layers upon layers that are revealed about previous seasons and going forward. And that's what I said about season three is season three needed to shake things up. And season four is the payoff of the last four seasons combined. And what happens now is it's planted the seeds to go forward and go into new territory. I don't want to see this Lawrence LaRusso feud carry on anymore. It's done. It's it's old now bury it start something new start a new direction and i genuinely firmly believe this i'm not sure what the fate of eagle fang will be long term but as i've said in most of my recent streams i genuinely believe this could be the final shot of season three i've mentioned it before to those of you who know what i'm about to say you you know you know what i'm about to say season three's finale plays out like this crease is out of jail he's had a mini civil war with uh silver it hasn't worked Picture this, you have Johnny, Daniel, Chosen, and Kreese. That's your four senseis. And Miyagi-Do consists of Eli, Dimitri, Tori, and Sam. Then you have Miguel walk in, followed by Robbie, followed by Kenny, followed by Sean. Imagine that. Imagine that is your ending for season five. You do not need any more kids than that. And every single kid in that dojo, we care about. And that's what I'm saying. I know everyone doesn't want these kids to be redeemed, but these kids will be redeemed because these kids are cared about by the adults. Therefore, they're there cared about by us. And with Silver being the final boss, you're going to have evil doppelgangers of the main characters. Power Rangers fans, you know what I'm going to say here. The Power Rangers had an evil doppelganger group called the Psycho Rangers. Don't be surprised in season six or even in season five, if you start seeing characters introduced who are literally doppelgangers of Miguel, Robbie, Hawk, and you have all the all the kid fighters that we care about in one place. Sean and Kenny will remain in Cobra Kai for season five, but I do feel like the bond between Sean and Robbie that was formed in Juvie and the bond between Kenny and Robbie that was formed is too strong for them to stay on the opposite side of the fence forever. I believe they'll all come together, and that's where this starts. It starts with Eli and Robbie right here. And I think I just... I, I may, it may sound like I'm rambling, but I, there's so many layers to this fight. It, 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 it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. This is why I wanted something different than Robbie and Miguel, because it's so it's so different. You know, it, it freshens things up a little bit. It changes things. And now Miguel is going on a great arc next season to where these kids are all going to learn. You are not defined by a trophy. Now, Eli this season, in a way, is defined by a trophy, but not 
necessarily by the trophy itself, but by believing that he can do it, and that it's not about his haircut, it's about who he is. And shout out to Moon, who gave him, who planted one on him, because I tell you what, as cheesy as that may be, sometimes all a fella needs is a kiss from the wo woman of his dreams, and I, I, he'll run through a wall. Like, <laughs> you know, it, it done wonders for him. Eli needed something like that. He needed a boost. And the minute that the music really hits, and they flip off both their geese and like robbie's got like his you know washboard abs and he's ripped and then you've got and then it's like as soon as the you know as soon as the camera pans on hawk you know what's coming up pulls off the gi flexes the tattoo hawk screech and then we're about to get the sudden death ultimate finale i freaking love it absolutely love it and everyone's kind of like looking like what the hell why are they all taking their shirts off or whatever but i think it's more of just uh you know symbolic of these two just being so relentless like i mean miguel and i'm being completely honest here dark side season two miguel could be on this kind of wavelength but i think these two are the most dark aggressive fighters in the show on their day and as the final progresses robbie sees kenny in the side on the wings and he doesn't strike hawk where he could win the match now i saw someone leave a comment saying hawk could have won the match earlier true but in this instance just using this example robbie could have won it here but he didn't because he didn't want to have an even more of an effect on kenny than he already had and these two continue to duke it out they're tired they're exhausted they're burnt out and they're just going balls to the wall balls to the wall balls to the wall, balls to the, wall. the fight's going on on and on and on and on the camera's moving the fights are going on you know the audience is cheering everyone's gasping the score's building and then it gets to a point where robbie elbows hawk's leg that's eli now i keep saying hawk and then Robbie channeling that inner cobra that he has now is like, come on, come on. And Eli, using everything that he's learned, lures Robbie in. And if you notice, there's a bit of a parallel. When Johnny and Daniel are fighting in the mid-season finale, or mid-season, when Daniel does the pressure points on Johnny, Johnny brings him down with that maneuver and whacks him on the chest. What does Eli do? How does Eli get that point? So even though he's trained with Daniel, he's still got those teachings from Johnny. And that's what he uses to beat Robbie. Pulls him down, whack, right in the stomach. There's your winner. And I, I just, I genuinely feel like, you know, again, Rocky themes, Rocky and Adrian, Hawk and Moon, like it's, it's right across the board. I love this uh, fight between these two. I could talk about it forever. Um, I might have to honestly dedicate a whole chosen life to it just because it's so... There's so much to unpack with this scene that it, it's so hard to condense in a single video. But I know you guys like these longer ones where I go on a bit and then, you know, you listen to it while you're doing other stuff. So, you know, I, I've gotten a bit of feedback for that. But there's one final shot where Hawk's holding the trophy. His hawk, like his, lit, his hawk tattoo is blazing. You know, he's flexing the muscles. He's cheering out of the crowd. Hawk is redeemed. And this is why, again, I'm bringing it back. This is why Hawk was never a spy. Just wanted to throw that out there. Now, however, Robbie and Tori could be spies with the details that we have. But also, it's just such a... It's such an arc from where he was. It's such an arc from where he was. You know, especially after losing his hawk, which was a big key part of his identity. You know, to have it stripped away and reforge yourself an identity as yourself. You know, literally Slim Shady over here. I mean, come on, what's not to love? And I can't wait to see all the hawk, like, tribute videos where... Because there is that one, I think, by Rusty Lion, shout out to them, and uh, someone else, where they have Eminem playing over it. I mean, you can play Eminem over it perfectly now, you know, what I mean? <laughs> it just lines up. But this fight was awesome. I absolutely freaking adore uh, uh, Robbie and Eli. Like, this fight was incredible. It paid off a lot of the past. It set up a lot for the future. And I really think there's a world where these two can, you know, make peace. Not be friends and buddy-buddy. There's still bad blood. But I think there is a world there where there's growth now that we've seen it with sam and tori and potentially miguel and robbie you know anything's possible now but guys and girls comment down below let me know what you thought about this fight let me know like what, what was your first reaction to this did you think they were even gonna do this and as i keep saying i always talked about it that they could do it but i never thought they would and i'm so happy i was right and wrong but jump in the comment section down below let me know and one thing I want to stress, as I've said in my other videos, it doesn't matter if you're Team Robbie or your Team Miguel or your Team Hawk or your Team Sam or your Team Toriel or Team Meat, 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 doesn't matter. 
because at the end of the day, they're all coming home on the same page anyway, to fight the big bad who is Terry Silver. That, you've just brought Thanos into the show. You know what I'm saying? So jump in the comments section down below. I will see you all in another video soon. And because it's Hawk and Robbie, let's just throw it all the way back to season one. That was a lucky point. It's going to be your last. Why? Leaving early to fix that stupid haircut? <laughs> They've come a long way from where they began. <laughs>